So good morning and welcome to our Zoom, Zoom service at St Hilary's Wallasey on Sunday the 17th of January 2021. And we begin our service with our call to worship. Please respond with the words in bold type. Father, when we come to you hungry, perhaps it's because we haven't fed properly from your word. Word of God, feed us. There are times when we lose our way. We feel like we're going around in circles, unsure of our next step. Word of God, lead us. When we are stuck in repetitive habits, we know that you have more for us outside this, of this med mediocrity. Word of God, shake us. Parts of our hearts are cold towards the world you love. Fill us with compassion. Word of God, break us. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. Feed us with your wisdom, lead us with your love, shake us with your reality and break us with your perspective and rebuild us with your Holy Spirit's power. Amen. Our first song is Come Now is the Time to Worship. The words should be on the screen. Would you like to join with us to sing this morning? Um, God Sorry. Christ has revealed his glory. Come, let us worship. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the Lord's name is greatly to be praised. Give him praise, you servants of the Lord, and praise the name of the Lord. Come, now is the time to worship. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate, let us call to mind our sins. Please respond with the words again on bold type. Lord God, our maker and our redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. 
We have heard the good news of Christ, but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. May God, who loves the world so much that he sent his son to be our saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as our saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Richard will lead us in our prayers for others. Richard, I can't hear you. The response to Father by your spirit is bring in your kingdom. Lord, today we pray for the coming of God's kingdom. You sent your son to bring good news to the poor sight to the blind, freedom from the captives, to the captives, and salvation to your people. Anoint us with your spirit, rouse us to work in his name. Like the first disciples, help us to hear your call and respond. Father, by your spirit, bring in, bring in your kingdom. kingdom. Send us to bring help to the poor and freedom to the oppressed. Lord, we remember particularly those who have felt oppressed because they are alone and cannot get out to see their friends. We remember those who are oppressed by dark thoughts and difficulties in their mental health. Father, by your spirit, Bring, bring it in, in your, your kingdom. kingdom. Send us to tell the world the good news of your healing love. Lord, we pray especially for those who are trying to get your message out. They can no longer do it face to face for people who are struggling with technology, for ministers of your gospel, who are frustrated because they cannot go to minister one-to-one -one with people who need them. Father, by your spirit, bring in, your, in kingdom. your kingdom. Send us out to those who mourn to bring joy and gladness instead of grief. We just take a moment to remember people we know who have lost loved ones in the last year. We remember especially this week the family and friends of Donald Leyland. Father, by your spirit, bring in your in kingdom. Your kingdom. Send us to proclaim that the time is here for you to save your people. Father, by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. Father, use us, unworthy as we are, to bring your king in your kingdom of mercy, justice, love and peace. Empower us by your spirit and unite us in your son 
that all our joy and delight may be to serve you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Arise, shine, for the light of the world has come. Darkness covers the earth and its people. But the radiance of God's light burns away its shadows, illuminates the smallest corner and heralds in the start of a new dawn where hearts no longer fear, souls might be set free, and sister shall follow brother, nation shall follow nation, and kings and princes bow down in awe before the one who comes to reign. Arise, shine, for the light of the world has come. Alleluia. And the collect for the second Sunday of Epiphany. Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, bring us with the co-creation to your glory, hidden through past ages and made known in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Lorna will bring us our Bible reading. Today's reading is from John, chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathaniel replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. So Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Our next song is How Deep the Father's Love for Us. Let's sing together now, how deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How deep the Father's love, let's sing together.
over to Alan for the message of today. Alan, you're still on mute. All right. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that your word is living and active, as we have already said in this service. And we pray that as we come to the written word in the scriptures, you will uh, reveal to us more of Jesus, your living word, and that we may see him more clearly. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I hope you can all hear me properly now. And um, uh, during this talk, Caroline's going to be moving on the slides for me. So each time I'm just going to have to say next slide. Um, so if we can have the next slide, please. Not moving at the moment. There we go. Thank you. You may remember a BBC series about 10 years ago called The Nativity, which was obviously shown that Christmas and it seems to be shown regularly since. In that uh, series, uh, when the story of the Magi, uh, the wise man, is being told, they use the phrase that they've seen a star about a king who will build a bridge between heaven and earth, a king who will build a bridge between heaven and earth. This is why Jesus came, and that's where our reading today eventually will take us. Next slide. John chapter 1 features, next slide, thank you. Uh, John chapter 1 features John the Baptist, 
Next slide. It features Andrew and another unnamed disciple who meet with Jesus. Next slide. It features Simon Peter, well, Simon, I should say, who is then renamed Peter by Jesus. And there are some main characters in today's Bible passage too. Uh, Philip, Jesus himself, of course, and Nathaniel. And in the background of this story, um, in the background of this story are two Old Testament characters, Moses and Jacob. Moses is mentioned in verse 45, if you've got the, no, sorry, go, go back, Caroline, go back. Keep going back <laughs> to Philip, that's thank you. Um, uh, Moses is mentioned in verse 45 um, as uh, uh, someone who uh, wrote about Jesus centuries before. And Jacob is not explicitly mentioned at all, but is referred to, uh, his story is referred to at the end of the uh, chapter. And so Philip is the main character, uh, first of all. Uh, John led Andrew to Jesus, Andrew led Simon to Jesus, but Philip seems to be called directly by Jesus. It says at the beginning of our reading that Jesus went from where he was before uh, to Galilee and he found Philip. That's all it says. It, he found Philip and said, follow me. We don't know how, we don't know exactly when this happened or where they were when it happened um, uh, uh, and we don't know if anyone else was involved at all. It's just uh, that very simple phrase. He found Philip and he said to him, follow me. It's amazing, isn't it, how everyone's story of how they came to faith is different and unique. There's more than one pattern of how a person is converted. Some Christians can't remember a time uh, without believing in God or knowing Jesus. Others are before and after Christians. Uh, uh, I'm one of those, someone who uh, knew that they didn't, uh, that they weren't Christians before, had no Christian commitment or faith before, but then a time came um, when uh, uh, they, uh, we met God, I met God, and uh, I came to make a Christian commitment. But both types of believer, uh, the before and afters, or those who can't remember uh, not, not believing, have both come to the same point, to repentance and faith in Christ. Some are definitely and suddenly converted. Others wrestle with the decision for years, and perhaps it, it happens gradually. Some find faith through a book, others through the witness of a friend. Everyone's story is different and unique. Imagine a meeting between three men who were healed of blindness during Jesus's uh, earthly ministry. One telling his story might say, oh, he healed me by putting mud on my eyes. Another would say, no, 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 that's not how it happened to me. He had to, um, he just spoke and my sight returned. A third one might say, he had to lay his hands on me twice before I was completely healed. All were healed and all believed, in, uh, but God used different routes for each of them to arrive at that point. And it's the same for those who come to faith in Christ. John Ryle, who was the first Bishop of Liverpool, uh, said, all are not converted in one and the same manner. And there's a well-known Puritan saying, God breaketh not all men's hearts alike. And so Philip goes from becoming a new disciple of Jesus, follow me, to making another new disciple. And presumably this is what Jesus meant by becoming a fisher of men or catching people, as he says in the other Gospels. And this potential new disciple 
is an interesting character called Nathaniel. More about him in a moment. But first, notice how Philip piques Nathaniel's curiosity. He says, we've found the one Moses wrote about. We've found the one Moses wrote about. Next slide. Of course, at the time of this story in the gospel, there's no New Testament. It hasn't been written yet because it hasn't even happened yet. So Philip and all the first Christians look to God's word in the Old Testament to see what God had revealed about the Messiah. It's common today for Christians to shy away from reading the Old Testament because we find it difficult and we find it, uh, uh, we struggle to find Jesus there. But if read and taught correctly, in the end, we can't really understand the New Testament, the gospel or the cross of Jesus without the Old Testament. Another quote from John Ryle, first Bishop of Liverpool. He says this, Christ is the sum and substance of the Old Testament. To him, the earliest promises pointed in the days of Adam, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. To him, every sacrifice pointed in the ceremonial worship uh, appointed at Mount Sinai. Of Jesus, every high priest was a type and every part of the tabernacle, the temple, was a shadow. And every judge and deliverer of Israel was a figure. He was the prophet like Moses, whom the, the, the Lord God promised to send. He was the king of the house of David, who came to be David's Lord as well as son. He was the son of the virgin and the lamb foretold by Isaiah, the righteous branch mentioned by Jeremiah, the true shepherd foreseen by Ezekiel, the messenger of the covenant promised by Malachi, and the Messiah, who according to Daniel was to be cut off, though not for himself. The further we read in the volume of the Old Testament, the clearer we find the testimony about Christ. The light which inspired writers, sorry, which the inspired writers enjoyed in ancient days was at best dim, but compa uh, compared to that of the gospel. But the coming person they all saw afar off and on whom they all fixed their eyes was one and the same. The spirit which was in them testified about Christ. I know that's a long quote from John Ryle, but I thought it was uh, worth uh, reading because of its uh, richness and how it uh, tells us the Old Testament is about Jesus. Remember Jesus telling his disciples on the Emmaus Road how all the law and the Psalms and the prophets are about Jesus himself. And this is how Philip begins to introduce himself to uh, 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 introduce Nathaniel, uh, Nathaniel, I should say, to Jesus. So next slide. Nathaniel is only mentioned twice in the Gospels at either end of John's Gospel. He may not be one of the 12 disciples, but he might possibly be the same uh, person as Bartholomew. But uh, many people had different names like Simon Peter did in those days. Next slide. Nathaniel was clearly a friend of Philip. He was from a neighboring town of uh, the neighboring town of Cana. And it's interesting that in the uh, Gospel of John, the next story is about the wedding at Cana. Nathaniel seems to be a blunt character. He's not very tactful. He seems to spurt out his thoughts uh, on the spur of the moment, a bit like Simon Peter in many ways. And uh, the first thing in this conversation is where he's, um, uh, he, he, because he's from Cana and Philip mentions Jesus is from Nazareth. He sort of spits at that, he sort of spits it out. Nazareth, how can he be from there? Nothing important happens there. Nothing good comes from Nazareth. We might think of the rivalry between local towns and cities uh, in England today, perhaps between Wallasey and Birkenhead, 
or between Liverpool and Manchester, or where we used to live, between Derby and Nottingham. Nazareth, the best thing about Nazareth is the road to Cana, he might have said. But because Nathaniel trusts his friend Philip, he goes with him. And Jesus, on meeting Nathaniel, immediately describes him as a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. Verse 47. And then follows a conversation about sitting in under fig trees and about angels coming and going into heaven. It's all a bit cryptic until we realise that the background to these verses is the story, the Old Testament story of Jacob. Next slide. The name Jacob means a cheat or a deceiver. The most, sorry, there should be another slide now. Sorry, next one. Thank you, missed one out. The most famous stories, uh, parts of the story about Jacob are when he runs away from home because his brother Esau has vowed to kill him because Esau has become another victim of one of Jacob's schemes. But when Jacob stops on the way, as he's on, uh, on the run, he stops on his way for the night in the middle of nowhere, alone and afraid, he finds that God has got there before him. Next slide. Jacob dreams that above him stands a ladder or staircase with angels and ascending and descending from him into heaven. Next slide. He calls that place Bethel because Bethel means house of God, Bethel, because God met him there in his time of need. Next slide. And you can find this story and much more, of course, in the book of Genesis. Uh, this episode is in Genesis 28. Next slide. In our reading today, Jesus is referring to this story when he says that Nathanael and the other disciples will see heaven open and angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Son of Man is how Jesus often referred to himself. Next slide. So the focus is very much now on Jesus himself. What's Jesus really saying to Nathaniel in this conversation? Well, it may be that before this meeting, Nathaniel had been reading this story in Genesis, and that's what Jesus means by the bit about uh, Nathaniel sitting under the fig tree. He knows what uh, Nathaniel's been thinking about, what he's been meditating on uh, under the fig tree. That's the private place. Jesus knew Nathaniel's deepest thoughts, even the most in, in the most private and personal moments. But the point of the dream about the ladder or staircase was that God was with Jacob. He was there. He was in that very place, even though it seemed to be in the middle of nowhere. It was the house of God, the place where God was, Bethel. Later, Bethel became, became the site of one of the places of worship in Israel. In other words, a place where people connected with God, a kind of temple. One of the great themes of the whole of John's gospel, and remember this is in John 1, it's right at the beginning of uh, John's telling of the story of Jesus. One of the great themes of John is that the place where people see God most clearly now is not in a tent or a tabernacle or a temple, in a, in a person. That's where people see God, in a person, in Jesus of Nazareth. Yes, Nathaniel, even in that despised town. And so where do heaven and earth meet? In Jesus. Where do we discover the presence of God? In Jesus. Where do we find grace and truth? In Jesus. Where do we 
experience the new birth of God's spirit in Jesus? Where are we met with acceptance and forgiveness in Jesus? That's more of what we all uh, uh, read of in John's, in John's gospel. Jesus is the bridge between heaven and earth. And if we read almost to the end of John, we'll find similar titles given to Jesus to the ones that Nathaniel uses here. First, Pilate writing the sign at the top of Jesus's cross, King of the Jews. And then right at the end of John's gospel, Thomas declaring, my Lord and my God, when he witnesses that Jesus is risen and alive. But it seems that it only took a brief moment for Nathaniel to realise that Jesus really was special. And he makes a strong confession of faith there and then. You are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Keeping ourselves focused on Jesus in this way and on the word of Jesus is vital in these difficult and challenging times for all of us. I wonder, are we praying for people to come to faith in Christ during this time? We might not know how it would happen, but people can be and will be led to Christ during these days. And if that's the case, if that's so, perhaps we might still be the means God uses to help someone else discover the Lord Jesus as their Lord and King and discover that he truly is the bridge between heaven and earth. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the bridge, the one who connects us to God through your birth, life, death and resurrection. And thank you that you are amongst us, still building bridges. And we pray, Lord, for those who are seeking you and for those who still need to discover and find that you are the bridge. And Lord, for those people, we pray that we ourselves might even be part of how you bring them to yourself, how they come to faith and come to know you. And so we too will be bridges between heaven and earth. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. Our next song is Great is Thy Faithfulness. Well, isn't, it, well, isn't it great that we can know that morning by morning, new mercies we see, we serve a faithful God, same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Grace is thy faithfulness, let's join together. Grace is thy faithfulness. Just not
We say together the creed. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth, shown to be from God by his signs and power, handed over to us in the plan of God, <coughs> crucified by our sinful hands. Excuse me. <coughs> oh. <coughs> we believe in Jesus Christ, raised by God from the dead, freeing him from death's power, for death could not hold him. We believe in Jesus the exalted, ascended to the right hand of God, who received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured his spirit on his people. We believe and repent. We receive God's forgiveness. We believe, we rejoice. We receive God's Holy Spirit. Amen. And the notices. Um, please don't forget that the Bible study is continued tomorrow night um, on Moses, followed by nine pr night prayer on Zoom. Um, I think there's a PCC meeting this coming week on Tuesday. And also the church is open today. I think it's 11.30 till 12.30 and 3 till 4 and also Thursday. And next week's service will again be on Zoom. Is that it? Anything else? Caroline, can I say something that, isn't, that we've missed on the newsletter is that we hope to have a pastoral team meeting on Thursday, as we said a couple <coughs> of weeks ago. Um, okay. Thursday at 7.30. A notice will come out about it, but because it's not on the newsletter, I thought it'd be worth mentioning to those involved now. Okay. Sorry, I've got a frog in my throat. Um, And now the blessing. May God's love surround you, God's spirit guide you, God's whisper cheer you, God's peace calm you, and God's shield protect you, God's wisdom arm you, wherever God may lead you. Amen. We'll say this together. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, Help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Go, go now to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>